Hey guys, how's it going? I'm in the side yard. I want to give you guys an update on a few things around the property. And I also want to plant up that clematis that I just got. It is so beautiful and the fragrance on it is amazing. Um, so I'm going to put that in the side yard, the other side yard. <laughs> um, but I want to give you guys an update of everything that's going on for our nursery and where I'm at so far with plants. And then I also need to dig up a few plants. These are just old pots. <laughs> See, this one is like a hibiscus, it says. Um, but these have willows in them. I started to propagate them and I put them in some water to propagate them. It was super easy. And now they've started to shoot out some buds. They've been in these containers right here for about two weeks and they spent about a week in the water. I found when I do shorter cuts like this guy that they don't fare too well. These ones that I do that have much longer stems on them tend to do a little bit better for me. I don't know why. Most people were saying do like pieces like this, but I don't know, they just die. So I do these long, beautiful ones and they that's what tends to work for me. So that's what I'm doing. And then I also have some peonies. This one lost its tag and I don't know what variety it is, but you can see some peonies for the nursery are starting to come up. These were rooted last year. They were started last spring. Um, I didn't sell them because they weren't gonna do anything for anyone. So this is gonna be their second growing season. In these pots, down here I have a couple of dahlias from last year that didn't sell. So I have three left. I have a rose that didn't sell. And then I have this whole, I've got 13 more um, peonies. I've got two different varieties. I have this pink one called Carla and this like softer pink one called Sarah. So I've got all of those going and some of them over here are starting to come up. I saw this one right here. There's a little bud right there. So I know that there's life in here. Um, I did come in and I, I checked all of them um, about a month ago. I kind of like moved some of the dirt and saw that there was life in the roots. So these ones are the ones that are good. And then I've got all of that there. And as far as willows go, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I have eight willows. And I also have this random Japanese maple. This is from last year. And it's starting to like do something. I don't know. I pulled it out of the ground. I didn't even plant it. We don't have a Japanese maple that's green, so I don't know where it came from, but I'll take it. And then over here, these are all seed started ones. Nothing has come up yet because they are outside. They're not in a heated area, but I've got, um, what is this? This is artichokes here. I have tomatoes squash, cherry tomato, and more tomatoes. I'm doing lots of tomatoes with two different other options. That's This is probably less than I'll actually sell. I could have gotten away with starting even more, but I didn't. I probably should have started like two, maybe three more. I probably should have started three more of these flats right here, but I didn't. This is what I'm doing. I have the pots to do it. They're all right there. <laughs> I just need to get out and do it. And then this here is a corkscrew willow that we've had for two years and I take lots of cuttings from it. You can see it's starting to bud up a little bit here. So I know that there's, I mean, you can see it's green. So I know that there's plenty of life left in it and we get lots of really cool branches from this guy. Here's a grass um, that we had, that we've had this for like three years. I don't think it's doing well anymore in this container. So this might be it for the year. And then two Dusty Millers from a project that we just finished. So my plan for this video is to plant the clematis and to also do some like propagating. Oh, my seedlings, you guys, we've had so much rain. My seedlings that I've put outside my snap peas have not appreciated it. They are so mad at me. Uh, let me show you. You can see a lot of them are snapped in half. Even these ones back here. All of these guys are doing pretty well. Some of the leaves haven't fared too well, but for the most part, um, all the roots and everything on these guys are doing pretty well. But my sweet peas, this one totally just got snapped off. This one snapped here. Um, this one has snapped and shriveled. It's still got life in it. I'm hoping that they rebound. We'll see. You can see this one snapped way up here and it's shot out another shoot. 
So I think that they'll all be fine, but they're clearly not happy with this weather. It has been so cold and so windy. Last night's gusts were up to like 45 miles an hour. It was terrible. Um, our trash can fell over at midnight. And so we had to go out there at midnight and go pick up the trash can. The trash was getting picked up the next morning. So I went and cleaned all that up and that was such a pain. Um, and it's pouring down rain. We've had so much water. And then randomly during the day, blue skies, blue skies. Not a, like, okay, one cloud right there. I don't know, the weather here is so bipolar right now. It's driving me insane. Um, I'm wearing shorts and a sweater cause it's like, cold but it's not that cold so my seedlings are mad at me anyways back to this i would like to propagate some of these anemones to have for this year so all of these ones that are on this side of the brick i'll be pulling up and putting in containers and some of these ones that are far out i will also be oh my gosh look tulips these bulbs were in here three years ago i planted these and <laughs> i'm surprised that they are even like coming up at all because tulips this is not the zone for tulips. They should not be coming up. I mean, you can see the tiniest. Look at the tiniest little buds. They're so tiny. So, and they're so short, that's so cute. Um, okay, Robbie, stay on track. I'm also, I'm gonna leave all of these ones here. Um, I'm gonna leave these ones back here, but I'm gonna come pick these ones out that are inside the bulge weed. I want this to be the bulge weed and this to be the anemones. So these guys are gonna get picked out and so are all of these. This might be a two-day project because I'm running out of light. So I'm gonna get the clematis done first and then I also might need to pick up some soil. I think I'm out of soil actually. Maybe I see a bag over there. I don't know. My life's a mess, okay? I'm gonna get the clematis planted though. That is a first things first. You guys, I'm getting so distracted by everything. <laughs> Look, daffodils are opening up. These guys are all butted up. Those guys are all butted up. And if I turn ya, you can see the color over there. I've got white with yellow throats. I've got double whites. I've got little yellow ones. I've got yellow with yellow throats. And I've got yellow with orange throats. Uh, I am loving springtime. Okay, so the clematis is gonna go right here. It's gonna grow up on this trellis. It gets 30 feet tall. So it's gonna go way past this trellis. And I'm gonna have it be supported by the um, eaves that we have here. Let me grab the clematis. I just showed it to you guys last week, but let me show you again. This is her. She, you guys, the smell is so sweet. It's like, it's mind blowing. This is a clematis. Armandai, I don't know, it's an evergreen clematis. It gets 30 feet tall, you guys. Um, it is an evergreen clematis. And it is a group one, meaning you don't want to prune it. You just want to let it do its own thing. So, oh my gosh, you guys, the smell on this thing is amazing. If you can find this, I highly recommend getting it. It was 19 bucks, or it was 20 bucks, 19.95. These flowers, you guys, are amazing. Absolutely beautiful. You can see that there are so many more little buds on here. Some of these have five petals. Some of them only have three petals. Some of them have four petals. It's beautiful. I, I'm super in love with this clematis. I have it growing up on this. Oh my God, so pretty. Last year I had hops here and they got really tall and really beautiful and then they got infested with spider mites so I had to pull them out. This was the roots that are left. I thought that there was life in them, but there's no life, so they're going into the trash. So I went in with the plant tone. I am also going in with this. It is extreme gardening. Mycos. It is pure mycorrhizae fungi, and I am going to rub this directly on the roots. The plant tone that I used does have mycorrhizae fungi in it, but it doesn't work unless it comes directly in contact with the roots of the plant. What it's doing is putting little holes in the roots that are making it want to produce new roots, and that's what makes it grow really fast. So 
needs to come in direct contact with the roots. I'm gonna be using the mycorrhizae fungi from Extreme Gardening directly onto the root system of this clematis, especially because I kill every single clematis that I've ever put in the ground. Just like that. Pop that in there and backfill. Okay, she's not big. She has a very, very, very long way to grow, but I love it. And I think it's gonna be absolutely beautiful. I can just imagine walking in the gate and that trellis being full of this. And you guys can see, these are the eaves. I'm gonna train it to go up, cascade down, and then go over that way. It'll come up this way, go up and cascade out and go out this way and it shouldn't have a problem doing any of that. I'm gonna train a few of them to kind of go in front of this window. That's our kitchen window. Um, it overlooks our next door neighbor's house, which nobody lives there now, but let me show you guys. So here's their house, or here's our house right here. And here is the neighbor's house and that's their kitchen and their back porch. Um, if anyone wants to be my next door neighbor, this house is coming up for sale pretty soon. So you could live right next door to me and we could garden. That way I don't get a terrible neighbor. <laughs> okay, but really I wanna grow some of these over this window. So that way when I'm in the kitchen, I'm not looking like directly at their house. So I cannot wait. This is gonna be beautiful hanging over this eve, cascading down in front of the window. And it's really nice because it is an evergreen. So there's always gonna be something green growing on this. I, I'm in love with this clematis. And what's really great is you don't have to do anything. So any pruning that you do do on this clematis, you wanna do it after it's done blooming. It blooms on all of its new growth. It's a type one clematis, meaning that really you don't wanna prune it. Any pruning that you do do is just gonna be maintenance, getting anything that you don't love, kind of weird growth. But if you prune before it blooms, you're cutting off the blooms for next year. So make sure to do any maintenance that you need to do after it's done blooming. It blooms for about a two month period. So I think that's pretty good. Two months of blooms, I'll take that, especially this early in the, this early in the season, I love to have this thing chock full of white blooms. So yeah, um, I think he goes, I think I'm gonna have to come back tomorrow and do the pulling up of the anemones because I don't have soil. So I'm gonna have to go to the store tomorrow morning to go get some potting soil. And I'm also running out of daylight. It's getting dark. I left work a little early today. So let's, I'm gonna clean up my mess and I'll see you guys in a second. It's the next day. Didn't get that project done. And now I'm hoping to get it done. You can see all the lights are on. So I'm hoping that I have enough time. I'm gonna grab some little containers. I'm gonna go fill those up with some soil. So we got them all done guys. These are the Japanese anemone called Pamina. They're absolutely beautiful. Uh, I think I called them Panay earlier. 
<laughs> that's a pasta. These are pamina, um, but they're really pretty and I got 15 of them. So these are gonna be for the nursery and I think that these guys will end up going for about $7 a piece is what I'll sell these guys at. And they'll be ready probably like mid to late spring. They'll probably be ready closer to late spring. But yeah, I think that people will appreciate these. I know that I always wanted things for the shade because we had areas that I didn't know what to do with. I'm sure you guys could see when I was digging these up um, that there was little clumps of roots and then there was a long tendril and then another little clumps of roots on some of these. These guys spread by rhizomes. So what they're doing is they're establishing their plant and they're sending out a runner and then on that runner, they send off another little plant. So they're just spreading infinitely throughout the property. So you need to keep these guys in check. They're really pretty, but they do spread like crazy. So if you want them, either put them in a contained area or make sure that they're somewhere that you don't mind cleaning them up or letting them get very large because they will get very large. Um, we just pick out the ones that are in an area I don't want them or that are outside of that brick border that we have. So lots of options there it's really easy they come up they're just barely on the surface just right under there um I, my shovel went too deep with it so they're not a menace to take care of and actually they're really pretty so you could just totally leave them so they get about two to three feet tall and wide ours definitely did that with the foliage and then they got about five and a half feet tall with the blooms so they literally came up to like here on me it was crazy um, absolutely massive, but so gorgeous. And then they are zones three through eight. We are a zone nine technically, but I plant like we are an eight. And they bloom mid to late summer until your guys' last frost, and they will continuously pump out blooms. <laughs> the first year that we had them in the ground, I was like, why are these things not blooming? Why are these things not blooming? And then all of a sudden they like erupted with life and it was the most beautiful thing ever. We have ours planted in an area where it gets full sun for about half the day, first thing in the morning. And then it gets protection from the sun from midday to the very end of the day. That way it's getting, it's eight hours of sun it's getting, but it's only getting it when it's not hot. So it's getting it first thing in the morning um, and it's not burning in the hot afternoon sun. So that's another thing to think about maybe plant it in somewhere where it gets like dappled sun but definitely don't plant it somewhere where it's gonna get a full day of sun and it's gonna just like burn in that hot afternoon sun so that is gonna be it for this video you guys thanks for visiting our garden and i'll see you tomorrow bye